right over there. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> ha, I was just kidding. Were you were you kidding? I wanted to give my boy a hug. He was fine. He was like he was that great. He was just Okay. So welcome he back. Just has too many jokes in the head. Couple of reminders that we'll we'll do all semester. Just make sure we're good with it. Um if you ever have to be absent. Please, please, please log on to Schoology. Find my video for the vid, for the day you missed. I mean, we're videoing right now, so you know, you know you're responsible for making sure you watch the video. I had a student say to me during my third free class today, "Yeah, but it was the excused absence." Like, yeah, but it doesn't excuse you from the content of the class, you dork. So freaking dork. Yeah, I know. Stinking junior dork. Actually, it's gonna be me by the way. It was blatant. <laughs> Wait, the one, wait, that, that one guy that, that came to take the test, he was... Ellie, all those are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, yeah, we'll great. turn the that lights up. That was last year. That's so yeah. last year. We're like, so 2019. Right? Yeah, I'm trying to assist. Like, all right, so, yeah, um, so, so let, let's kind of review a couple things just so we have the nitty-gritty. You will have to go and get... The second semester book, it's over in the bare necessities. It should be in by the end of today. But I'll give you like this whole week and like Monday of next week's um, stuff. It's already printed off, so you don't have to worry about a book until probably Tuesday of next week. Okay? So it's five bucks, bare necessities. If you can't afford it, let your counselor know. They give you a voucher, and they will. then you take it over to the bookstore and you get that book. Cool? All right. The reason you want that is because we finished our last semester book. Like, why, why do we break it up into two semesters? Well, I could give you something that thick. And you're like, I don't have a binder big enough. Or if you did find a binder big enough, your backpack would carry that and that, that alone. Very similar. Um, things that, uh, just so we know we're clear. So if you have your homework and you have your name up here, right? You still with me in this adventure? Oh, uh, no, no homework. I'll come around and I'll give you a mark. Is this the mark you want right there? Yeah, what does that mark mean? It's at the top. It's at the top. So that means you got full credit. I'm getting full credit. And what did I have to do to earn full credit? Does it have a lot to be right? No. You need to have tried all the problems, right? Try all. Okay, so that'll get you a four out of four. That's actually the only one that I want to collect on that day. Okay, so before we go over any answers, I'll come around, just do a real quick top mark. It's not anything that's in depth conversations, anything like that. You just have it on your desk. I come by, mark it off. Uh, if you're absent, have it out, and just as I come by, say, "Hey, I was absent." I'll put ABS at the top. It means I'm expecting you to, re do, you know, get it done, but you still get full credit. If you get this mark, that means you're going to get a three out of four. This top one's a four out of four, three out of four on this one. But let's let's curl away from a problem that started happening last semester. If you get a, a middle mark, don't just turn it in that day saying. Oh, sweet. I did, you know, half to three quarters of it, so I get a middle mark. I'm expecting you to get the rest of it done. You all know that I go over pretty much any question you want me to go over. So fill it in if you need to, but make sure it's complete. If you don't, this just becomes a one. You don't want the one. Make it a three. And then the bottom mark means, hey, you forgot to do your homework. You did less than half of it. You tried less than half of it. You get a two on this. But again, if you get a two on it, don't turn something in that day saying, here, um, get it done. And you get the two on it. So that's basically the homework policy for you. Good so far? I think of two things. All right. Two things I'm going to hand out. First thing I'm going to hand out, this is going to be the first week in a day of this class as far as homework. This is, this, don't worry, you're not assigned all five of these pages right now. You're, you know, this is like you, 
a precursor to you getting your workbooks. Okay. All right, we good so far? Okay, so just kind of put this aside for now. If you're looking at it going, I don't know how to do any of that. Well, yeah, because I now need to give you a lecture on it. I give you guys that. No, no, no. Now, this coming out to you now is your notes that, and someone asked, hey, should I keep everything from first semester? I recycle it. I'm not going to say, hey, go back to November 15th. Oh, I want to go back. You know, if I ever do, it's all on Schoology. You can go click in on, get in there. Okay, so before we start our notes, I'm happy to see you all. It's good to, good to be back. There should be, should be a recycle bin over there by the thing. If not, um, just want to run through this real quick. Just in case you forgot, you weren't sure, you guys know how to find Schoology, yes? So we get into Schoology, you go under your courses. And so first thing I need to do is what? What's wrong with this picture up there right now? Um, wait, where do you want? So I'm going to move this. We're going to move this into, into our semester one. Move. So that's out of the way. OK, so now we need to create a new folder. I'm thinking we go with what color? Don't go blue, don't go pink. Black. Gray. Gray? No, black. 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 All right, so semester two notes and videos. We good there? Actually, wait, do yellow. Do yellow. Go so black. Keep it black. Go on, keep one to charcoal. All right, so that will be our place where we can find our videos. So we'll open it up. We have nothing in there yet because it's the first day. I will have a PDF version of the notes I will post in there. So if you would like a copy of the notes, well, go to that, print it off. I don't want to print it at all. Go to the Math Science Resource Room and print it off, or any of the resource rooms and print it off. Print off the PDF. Okay, it'll be filled out, the notes filled out in there, and then It'll be listed by date, and then the video. What happens with the video on here? Okay, so I'm just going to go to my Algebra 2. I know it doesn't look like us, but Semester 2 materials. So here is my, here's what my notes would look like for my Algebra 2 class, which I know this isn't this class, but still looks similar. The PDF will come up, hit print or download or however you need to do that. But what happens with the videos? This is the video, right? It's got the chain link. It's got the little YouTube icon. If I click this, it doesn't go anywhere. Okay, because Schoology doesn't like talking to YouTube for some reason. So I just need to go do this, right? If I click this right here, it opens up my YouTube page. And boom. So it's like 40 some minutes, and I have the volume off, so we don't have to listen to me. You don't have to listen to me twice. Sound good? That? You're subscribed? All right. Yeah, I'm subscribed too. I get notifications. Yay! Oh, I get like that. spam notifications. Knew you guys were my favorite class ever. Okay. Um, we're actually going to start a little different than what Algebra 1 sometimes is. And there's, there's sometimes little things that the district says, hey, we want you to put this in. And this is actually kind of a cool thing they wanted the district. The district said, we want to put it in, and it starts dealing with probability. 
And you have had, you've dealt with probabilities all along, okay? Whether you watch the news and you watch the newscaster say, hey, we have a 70% chance of rain today. And you're like, dude, he's wrong again. You know, sometimes with probability, there's rights and wrongs. Sometimes events take place, but a probability is something will happen or something won't happen. Okay? So the, the silly joke you say as math people or people who understand statistics, which hopefully will be you all after this week. Um, and, yes, I'm only giving you a small snapshot of statistics, so please don't walk out of this class saying, dude, I'm ready for AP statistics. You know, wait another year before you do that. Um, but if you, uh, if you were to take a thing of statistics and someone says, Hey, what's the chances of something happening? It either will or it won't. So it's gotta be 50, 50. Is that true? No, I mean, but it's just kind of the joke. It either an event will happen or won't. So I have two outcomes. So it's gotta be 50, 50, but sometimes an outcome is, will happen less often. Like. If you were to get on an airplane and fly from Denver, Colorado to Phoenix, Arizona, you have a pretty high probability that your plane makes it okay? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's what we're all hoping for, right? Not we're not hoping to be that 0.0001% chance of, you know, both engines fell off and we plummeted to, you know, find out what gravity was all about from 40,000 feet. We don't want to do that. All right. So let's move on a little bit. So probability. Let's see. Where is it? There is something here. No. Okay. It's actually written on your sheet, and I don't know why it's not showing up on mine. Let's see. Can I drag it anywhere? Oh, no, it's not a hot button. So it says the chance of something that will happen is the probability. And then the number of desired outcomes out of a total number of outcomes is also probability. Your probability happens between 0 and 1 times, okay? Meaning I can make between 0 and 1%. So I can go from 0% to 100% if I multiply this by 100, okay? Um, one piece of information, and I, I would encourage you, you know, at some point in your lives, you might apply for a job. Don't. Go to your interview and tell the person during the interview you're willing to give 110% for the job. You can't do it. It's impossible. Okay? As a, as a employer, a lot of people who are in screening interviews will hear that and it will negate you from even getting the job. Because if you say, hey, I'm going to give 110%, you're now deemed to be a liar. You can't give 110% of a day. Okay, you're not going to have more than 24 hours in a day ever. Okay, okay so stay away from the terminology. I'm going to give 110% on this. No. Let your employer know. I'm going to be a hard worker. I'm going to dedicate my time. I'm going to be here on time. I'm going to, you know, if anything else is needed, I'm happy to do it. But no, you're not going to give 110% of efforts towards a job or 110% of your time towards a job. Because it's impossible to do. Okay? The only place I saw something that was above 100% was when I was at Arizona State, mechanical engineering. They wanted to take all of the engineering students that were juniors out to Palo Verde Nuclear Power Plant in Arizona. Okay? And you're like, ooh, nuclear power. Scary. Ooh, look at that. Okay. So we all go out, and Palo Verde was originally designed to have five reactors on site. They have three reactors on site. Here's the wild thing. If they had all five reactors on site, those five reactors, those five reactors in Arizona, sitting outside of Buckeye, Arizona, sitting 38 miles away from Phoenix, Arizona, those five reactors, when you turn them on and you have all the reactors at 40%, you create enough electricity for the entire continental United States. Okay? That means any coal plants, they could just shut them down. Any natural gas plants, they could shut them down. They could have these five nuclear reactors, 
pushing enough electricity at 40% each reactor to run the entire continental United States. Now, there have been incidents with nuclear power. And people think it's bad. People think terrorists are going to go in, they're going to steal the nuclear reactors, and they're going to blow them up. Okay, that's, that's called propaganda. Okay, that's called fake news. It's the stuff that people put out there to scare people. And back when I was a kid, we didn't have internet. We didn't have Insta, Snapchat, FaceTime, anything like that. We didn't have any of that stuff. So word of mouth is what people do, and people would be out boycotting, you know, no more nukes. Okay, yeah, Three Mile Island happened in New York. Is there any danger there in Three Mile Island in New York? No, people still live right around it. There's no higher cancer rate. Yes, they had a slight malfunction that was corrected, and no radioactive waste got put out. Now, Chernobyl, that's a different story. Okay, that was in Russia. You still can't live in that part of Russia because of Chernobyl, okay? That was a uncontrolled nuclear reaction because they allowed the graphite rods to get pulled out too far and the reaction continued to go further. Now, let's go back to my say, saying with the 100, going above 100%, oh, above 100%. So I remember we're staring out in this leaded glass, it's like this thick, I mean, you could basically to do anything to that glass, and you're not going to come through it. And you're looking down at the tanks, and you can see this huge cooling pool of water. And you had these five huge rods, and they were about this wide, and they slid out, and that allowed your reaction to happen faster, and you pushed them into the reactor, and it slowed the reaction down that would be taking place. And basically, it's fusion that's taking place. And when fusion takes place, a large amount of electric or a large amount of energy is generated. A large amount of energy creates heat. You put heat with water, creates steam. Steam allows a turbine to turn. The turbine allows you to create electricity. That's the basic premise of how any power plant works. You want something to get really hot to create steam. And that's how it works. You know, people have thought, oh, if you're getting your electricity from a nuclear power plant. That electricity is radioactive. No, it isn't. That electron, that electricity traveling through that thing is it's going, hey, guess what? I'm radioactive. And you know what? You came from like wind power, so you're nothing. It has no idea where it came from. So we're at the power plant. We walk in, and there's a big dial. And the dial basically is, is these little clicks. And it goes click, 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 click. And as you click it, it's the rods moving in or out. Yeah. Whoa, wait, so when, like in Chernobyl, did the things like blow up? What happened is it, the coolant thing overfilled the wa radioactive water. It wasn't the water isn't supposed to be radioactive, but because they pulled the rods completely out, it went into the reactor. That created an uncontrolled chain reaction, which is nuclear fu fusion, which then allows radioactivity to seep out, and it got out, and it came out in a vapor cloud, and it was bad. No, it didn't go boom. They just, people ran like crazy to get away from it because you can't smell, taste, or feel radiation. Yeah. It's just, you know, if you get exposed to a large amount of gamma rays, that's what allows you, that your body will start. Yeah, it gets cancerous real quick. Yeah. There's a movie on Netflix called Chernobyl and it's like about that. Yeah. There, you don't really turn into a mutant yet. You actually, you develop, you, the first cancer you develop, develop is called thyroid cancer. Your thyroid is a small little gland right here. Like people um, don't like mutate and get it, No. Yeah, you, 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 you will, your life will expire before you become this mutant. Yeah. Though it's fun to make movies about mutants, so. Um, so when I was in this, at Palo Nuclear Power Plant, then you click the dials, and it went as increments of 5, so 5, 10, 15, 20, then all the way up to 100, and then it went beyond 100, went 105, 110. And so the, uh, the nuclear engineer is right there, tells one of the guys that's in our group, I'm just kind of standing over his left shoulder, and he goes, do me a favor. He goes, 
crank it up to 150%. And of course, everyone's natural reaction is, <coughs> what? You know, I'm, I'm going to get back. So he cranks it up to 150%. Okay? 150% at this nuclear power plant. Because the federal government, you know, they make things safe for all of us, and you know, we always want them running things. 150%. Is only 20% capacity of what this nuclear power plant can put out. The federal government said, you can't run this ever at 100%. So on the dial, when you went up to 150%, you only used, we're doing 20% of what the reactor was. Pretty sad, huh? Good thing it's federal government keeping us all safe. You know how much it costs to generate nuclear energy? Fractions, fractions of a penny. It, we would basically, the piece of paper that comes to you in the mail that says this is what your electric bill would be, if they were able to run those reactors at full capacity and have all five of them and run them at the capacity that they should run at, the piece of paper that you got your electric bill on cost more than it would be, it would, that cost the company more than it would cost you to run your electricity in your house for the month. This is when it's cheaper. It's very inexpensive. And it's very safe. But unfortunately, we've been so inundated. Oh, we need to have gasoline in our cars. If we don't have gasoline in our cars, everything's going to go bad. That's the Oh, it's pretty, I mean, if your lines get dropped down, yes. You know, if something disrupts you, the energy flow, so if you're going from here to here and the electric line between you is cut, yeah, you're going to have a power outage. Or if a transformer blows, which means a circuit breaker for your home out in the, your backyard or your neighbor's yard blows, yes, you're losing electricity. doesn't mean electricity is non-existent. It's still flowing, and it's called, it's on a alternating current, meaning it's, it can flow frontward or backwards. So that was the only place I had ever seen that you had something above 100% that was actually true. But it was true because the federal government said, when you get this to 150%, that can only be 20% of what the reactor can do. So we're good. But that was the only place I ever saw it. So go ahead. Um, just to make you feel safer about atomic power, the domes that are, those big cement domes that are over them, are designed so a 747 can nosedive from 40,000 feet. So you know the big, big jets? From 40,000 feet, you can do a nosedive, and it will not crack the concrete into the reactor. They are terrorism-proof. Yeah, but there's not a yeah, but. Unfortunately, we have been all brought up to think, this is bad, we can't have it. And it's, it's sad. But let's get back to a little bit more probability. This is a little simpler. It's not might be not as interesting as talking about things that glow. Okay, a bowl contains 12 slips of paper. Everyone envision this? I would say they're probably about the exact same size sheet of paper. It's probably the same color. But we have a different name of or with a different name of a month. So you have January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Okay, 12 months, 12 slips of paper. Find the probability that a slip of paper is selected at random. Random means that it's been shuffled up and you're not living there going, okay, look, look it for May. Okay? You're reaching in, you don't know what you're grabbing, you can't tell anything different between the piece of paper, so you're going to grab it out. So we want to know the probability that it starts with the letter J. Well, how many months are there first off? Twelve. We're all good with that, twelve months, yes? Anyone like, wait a minute, I thought there were thirteen. Okay, how many months start with J? Well, January, I got one. February, no. March, no. April, no. May, no. June, July, there's three total. August, September, October, November, December. So I have three months out of the 12 months that start with the letter J. Now, can I reduce that fraction of 3 over 12? Yeah. And sometimes reducing a fraction makes it a little bit more you know, I'm able to figure it out. 
So you have a one in four chance. Your probability of you drawing one of these slips of paper out, only one. It's like, I feel two. Yeah, pick one of them. The probability of you pulling out a slip of paper that you get a J for the start in the month is one in four probability. 25% chance. Okay? I know it's not as cool, but does it give you kind of a visual of how probability might take place? I hope so. Okay, suppose you write the names of the names of the days of the week on identical pieces of paper. Find the probability of picking a piece of paper at random that has the same day that starts with the letter T. I got Tuesday, Sunday, no, Thursday. Monday, no, Tuesday, Wednesday, no, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So I have two out of how many days? I have two out of seven. So I can't really reduce that fraction. So the probability that I the probability that I pull well, the T is 2 out of 7. The probability that my month starts with J is 1 out of 4. Okay? Are you more likely to pull a day of the week that does not start with the letter T? Yeah. You have a 5 and 7 chance of not pulling a letter out with that. And a lot of times probability is how we figure out games that we play. Games of chance. Rochambeau. You know rock, paper, scissors? You have a one in three chance of winning, right? That makes sense? You have three different outcomes. You're like, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. And yes, some people make up things. Um, hey, wait a minute. This is kind of a funny thing. Find the probability of picking a piece of paper from the number two's example that has the name of the day ended in Y. Monday, Tuesday. Do they all went with Y? So the probability that it ends with Y is a 7 out of 7, which is a equals 1. That means you have a 100% probability that if you had seven slips of paper with each of the days of the week on there, and you pulled one out, it's going to happen. Almost done. Almost done. You can wait. I'm almost done. Thanks, man. OK? So we have the word or. When we are finding the probability of one event or another event. Okay? So you could mix things together. What is the probability that it rains today or I roll a three with this pair of dice? Like, what does that have to do with it? Well, nothing. It's just I have two things. So it says you have a standard six-sided die. Okay? Die is the individual version of a pair of dice. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six. <clears throat> what is the probability that you roll a two or a five? Well, if I roll a two, it's a one out of six chance, right? And if I roll a five, it's a one out of six chance, right? And we're trying to do one or the other, so I'm going to add them together, so I get two out of six. So I have a one in three probability. If I take this one die... And my outcome is going to be a 1, or a 2, or a 3, or a 4, or a 5, or a 6, because I'm not adding them together. I'm only using one die, and we're using a standard die. So we have a 1 in 3 probability of rolling a 2 or a 5. Okay? <clears throat> You're waiting for a package to be delivered. The company says there is a 30% probability it arrives on Monday, a 40% chance it arri arrives on Tuesday, and a 20% chance that it arrives on Wednesday, and a 10% chance that it arrives on Thursday. What is the probability it will come on a Wednesday? So a Wednesday was a 20% chance, right? So I have 20%. I can keep it as a percent. I can make that percent a fraction, which is 1 over 5. So I keep it as a percent. Or it shows up on a Thursday, and a Thursday is a 10% chance. What's the probability it shows up on a Wednesday or a Thursday? Well, what's 20% added to 10%? 30. So I have a 30% probability it shows up on Wednesday or Thursday. And again, the word or, you're saying, hey, could this happen or could that happen? We're not saying they're both going to happen. It's going gonna, it's gonna to either be here or here. We good? Make sense so far? Can I move on? Okay. 
Not when finding the probability of an event of not happening, we will do one, subtract the probability of it happening. This is called the complement. Okay? So you roll a standard six-sided die. What is the probability you don't roll a six? Well, the probability that you roll a six is a one in six chance. Agree? So if I want a probability of not six, it's going to be one minus the one out of six. So what's the probability I don't roll a six? How many other numbers are there? Five. So one minus one out of six is five out of six. Okay. If you don't believe me, make that six over six because that's the same thing as one. Six minus one is five. Same denominator. I have a five and six probability of not rolling a six. You doing good? How close am I? I'm not. Okay. All right. You're waiting for a package to be delivered. The company says there is a 30% probability to arrive Monday, a 40% on Tuesday, a 20% it arrives on Wednesday, 10% arrives on Thursday. What is the probability it does not arrive on Wednesday? Or excuse me, on Monday. Well, the probability that it shows up on Monday is what? They gave us it. What's the probability of Monday? 30%. So what's, if I want to say, what's the probability of not Monday? I'm going to go 100% minus 30%. So I have a 70% chance that my package will not arrive on the Monday. The weatherman says there's a 45% chance of snow tomorrow. What is the probability that it won't snow? Probability of no snow is 100% minus 45%, which comes out to I have a 55% chance that it won't snow tomorrow. Okay, it's a better opportunity that it won't than it will in this case. You okay with those? Seems to me it makes sense. So if you want to find the complement of an event, you can go 1 minus it. 1 is also the same as 100% if you're dealing with percents. If we have and, a jar contains 100 marbles. There are 20 red, 20 blue, 30 green, 30 black. Find the probability I pick a marble at random that is red. How many marbles are in my jar? 100. How many of them are red? Can I reduce 20 over 100? Reduces to 2 over 10. 2 over 10 reduces to 1 out of 5. I have a 1 in 5 probability that I pull a red marble out. If I pick one marble, I look at the marble, I write down what I got, I put it back in, I shake the whole thing up so it's another random sh thing. What is the probability they're both red? So I have a 1 in 5 chance of the first one being red. Does that marble remember that it got picked? No, it's an inanimate object. It has no idea if it was picked once or a million times. So the probability that I pick a red and a red, and I put the marble back in, probability of finding that first red is 1 in 5. Put the marble back in, shake it all up, I have another 1 in 5 probability of pulling another red marble out. I multiply these fractions together to get 1 out of 25. <coughs> I have a 1 in 25 chance. If I pull two marbles out and I put the first marble back in, shook it back up, of that happening. If I pick one marble, look at it, replace it, and then pick another, what is the probability that neither are blue? Well, how many blue marbles did I have in this thing? 20. So how many are not blue? I have 100 in there all together. I have 20 that are blue. How many are not blue? 80. 80 is the same thing as 8 over 10. Right? So 80 over 100 is the same thing as 8 over 10, which is the same thing as 4 out of 5. So I have a 4 and 5 chance of pulling a marble that's not blue. I put it back in, shake it up. Don't look again. Pick another one. So I have a 4 and 5 chance again. So I have a 16 out of 25 chance that if I were to pull two marbles out of this bucket and I put the first one back, shook it back up, I have a 16 out of 25% probability that neither are Blue. Huh. If I pick one marble, look at it, replace it, and pick another, what is the probability that I get at least one green marble? Ooh, I get at 
least one green marble. Are you kidding me? All right, so I'm going to move this down a little bit so we can figure this out. All right, so probability of green, and I have probability of green. So that's one outcome. So I want to get at least one marble to be green, but I could have green and not green, and I could have not green and green. Okay, so if I'm picking two marbles out and I put them each one back, and you know, I pull it out and say, oh, it's not green. I shake it up, put it back in, and I pull it out again, it's not green. That's our event that could happen that might take place. But I want to know that at least one is green. So I'm going to do the probability of not green and times the probability of not green again. Okay, if I do not green and not green, that's the complement of one of my marbles being green, or both of them. So how many green marbles were there? Looks like 30 out of 100. 30 out of 100 is 3 out of 10. What's the complement of 3 over 10? Agree? Multiply those. 49 over 100. Probability that I pull, that's probably of not green, not green. So then I'm going to take the complement of that, which is going to give me a 51 out of 100. So what's this? Is that the complement of what I just did? Because 51 plus 49 is 100. 100 out of 100 is as big as we can get. We good? So we have or, not, and. What's the last one? Without replacement. Okay, same idea, but we're picking a marble, picking a marble. We're not putting it back in. Okay, so this is going to be kind of quick. How many black marbles do I have? So I have 30 out of 100 are black, yes? So find the probability. So the first one is a, we'll change that to 3 out of 10. Is that okay? Should I reduce 30 over 100? Now, if I didn't put the marble back in, I only have 99 marbles in there. I'm assuming the first one is black. So if I pulled the black marble out and didn't put it back, how many blacks are left in there? 29, right? So I have 3 times 29 over 10 times that. So I don't know what 3 times 29 is. 57 over 990. Is 3 times 29? No, 3 times 29, I got it wrong. That's 27, 2, that's 6, that's 87 out of 990. So if you pick, if you pick and you don't replace, your denominator has to change. If I pick two marbles with repl without replacement, what is the probability they're both blue? So let's just bring this down here a little bit. Both blue? How many blue marbles did I have in there originally? 20? So I have 20 out of 100 that are blue. Let's reduce that to 1 out of 5. Okay, so my first one is a 1 in 5 probability. But my second outcome is going to be 99. And we're assuming the first one I picked out was blue. So how many blues are left in there? Let's see, 19. So 1 times 19 is 19. 5 times 99 is some number. 5, 4, 45, 495. So I have a 19 out of 495 chance because I replaced. So the replacement, you change it. Okay, so I think you have enough information to do some damage. Is that okay? So I gave you your statistics packet. Agreed? I would like you to do pages one and two. It's a front and a back. It looks like there's four problems. Yes, don't let it fool you. There are different parts of it, but figure it out. So your assignment for tomorrow is worksheet numbers one and two, or pages, worksheet page one and two. So it's the very front and back. Just see if you can try it. Hey, does try mean you brought it in and, you're, and you have it all blank? You're like, I can't get any of this stuff. You didn't try. 
You're making an excuse acting like you're victimized because you didn't try and think. Ah, try it. What time are we out of here? Four minutes. Yay! Yeah. Ended with four minutes left. You want to hear my uh, best dice rolling story ever? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's a game in Las Vegas called Craps. Agree? So you deal, you have a pair of dice. Each die is one through six on each side. And so when you roll the dice, you add up what's ever on top on both dice. If the die happens to land on its edge or on a corner, then it's a re-roll. You don't try and sum it up. So you can get anywhere from, you can roll a two, you can roll a three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. In order to roll a two, it's a one and a one. In order to roll a twelve, it's a six and a six. Never in between. So the game of craps, how you earn money, is you can roll a four, a five, a six, an eight, a nine, or a ten. Okay? So if you roll a four, it's a three and a one, or one or a three, or a two and a two. If you roll, you know, a five, it's you know, two and three, or four and one, however, whatever combination. So if you bet on all of those. I was with a friend of mine who was betting a large sum of money on each one of those numbers. I rolled each one of those numbers in a single, in my rolls, 31 times in a row. He made money doing that. And when I was rolling the dice for this guy, he was betting a pretty large amount of money. But when we cashed out on the table with what he was betting and I was rolling, they cashed him out at $243,000. And it took about... 20 minutes for him to get me back. And how much? $243,000. It was enough that uh, they gave him the briefcase with the cash, and we actually, when we left the casino, we were walked out. He looked like a badass. Just carrying the extra. Yeah, I mean, no, the guy that looked incredible was, was, it, was, was the like security down. guard whose shoulders were about out to here. Looked like he played for Clemson on the old line. You know, and Wilkins. And he had some big bulge under here, and I'm pretty sure that wasn't because he had a pacemaker. He had a pretty big pistol. And it was basically for our security. He walked us off the property. So, why are someone getting robbed? Hey, we didn't get robbed. We made it. Yeah.